Hey viewers, uh, moving on to the next episode. Items I purchased from uh, Ehime Machine. Unfortunately, at this time, they are not part of the global Rakuten market, but uh, if you search the uh, part numbers uh, on global Rakuten, you can uh, find some tool resellers. So, KTC's AE921. I may not have any idea what this might be uh, used for. It's a specialty item, um, primarily for cooling systems, automotive cooling systems, uh, but not limited to cooling systems, like there's other hydraulic systems that use spring type uh, hose bands. So this is a tool, unlike your typical uh, simple as simple as your slip joint pliers. Uh, if you have the space to uh, use slip joint pliers, then those are those are uh, perfect tools for that purpose. But uh, you run into situations uh, where you cannot use a, a plier type to squeeze those uh, spring bands. So this is where a type a tool like this would uh, come into play. Uh, I don't think I've seen any other brand that uh, has a tool like this. So as you can see, spinning this end uh, moves the dynamic jaw to allow you to uh, squeeze that uh, hose band, spring type hose band. So there's nothing uh, um, plastic in here. It's all metal construction. It's got some weight to it. It's got some nice knurling on the end here and that accepts uh, any type of 3 8 drive uh, tool. So it could be on the bottom of the engine, uh, between the firewall and the engine. If you can get one hand in there uh, you, can, you can set it with one finger just to get enough tension so that it doesn't fall off and then follow it with an uh, appropriate tool. So just to, uh, I unfortunately don't have a, an example. I don't have a spring band with me, but uh, hopefully I can just uh, quickly illustrate it using something like this. Let's just picture that as being the, uh, the ears of the uh, spring band. So the jaw profile is uh, is machined that way to uh, provide good retention of those ears without uh, slipping away. So if I apply enough pressure, obviously work. there we go. So in this position, I can tap it move it around but uh, yeah it's, it's held on quite well it's not going to loosen on its own once you're done with what you need to do simply unscrew and voila so I think that's a good addition to uh, your arsenal of tools in dealing with those spring bands moving on to uh, some Tone items like this one here. This is a half inch drive wobble drive adapter. Not too many companies offer a half inch drive wobble. Now, word of caution here uh, if you are interested in buying Japanese uh, bits, uh, quarter inch drive bits. Uh, you will notice that this machining, the groove, uh, is machined on a different standard. It's a Japanese standard that does not apply to any other part of the world, unfortunately. So how do I deal with that? How am I able to use this in um, the North American uh, quick change bit chucks? Uh, all I have to do is grind off uh, roughly around 4 mil in order to uh, make it work. So I've done that. Uh, it's nothing unusual for me. Uh, annex bits that I purchased in the past, uh, I apply the same process. 
bit of a hindrance, but uh, not a deal breaker for me. Moving on to these Tonit impact sockets, Sh super shallow, half inch drive, uh, 4NV uh, with the corresponding number with a SS on the end. Uh, should be made in Japan uh, with a date code 2016. So these are super shallow ones. Just to illustrate the height differences. Now in the previous video I featured this uh, 21 mil and I compared it with uh, some other uh, sockets. I can take a look at that video as well for Another reference, uh, but just to quickly show off the uh, the dimension, I think I said something like each corresponding uh, uh, size equates to uh, one point five ish uh, height difference. Seems to be a trend right now with uh, tool companies making shallow, stubby um, air impacts uh, and and the sockets that go along with it. Now in the past I talked about uh, the, the machine groove. Uh, just to illustrate that just becomes a convenient place to slide the, uh, the ring and that holds the, uh, the retaining pin, the locking pin. But I don't use it so I take those uh, pins off I don't work in an environment that uh, requires me to use uh, safety lock pins. I really don't need the rubber ring, but... Uh, oh, so this is the 21 mil that I've been using at work uh, for some period of time. Uh, almost exclusively on uh, suspension components. And I almost always use it with uh, universal joint. So just to show you some of the wear and tear, which is uh, pretty common, not too out of the ordinary. Some mushrooming going on here. Nothing really alarming. But, uh, because these don't come with any sort of chamfer or bevel on the leading edges, uh, they are more prone to uh, marring, as you can see on uh, on this one here. It's not exclusive to impacts. Uh, I find that is the case with uh, chrome tools as well. Yeah, so if you don't have, if you don't see a lot of chamfer, such as these, yeah, it's more prone to uh, getting marring on those edges. So that covers that uh, again I'll leave the uh, part numbers in the description down below so take a look at that if you're so interested in purchasing these and that's it guys have a pleasant day